I was a global humanitarian. I traveled around the world building homes, building schools, giving food to the hungry, and other things that are considered to be what humanitarians do. And I regret it. Let me tell you why. Hi, my name is Hiram and I'm the creator of this channel, Selfless. Selfless is a YouTube channel that wants to shift YouTube into a force for good, creating content that sheds light on global issues that need to be addressed like poverty, slavery, lack of access to education, environmental sustainability, and more. So if you want to be a part of this journey to make the world a better place, make sure you subscribe below. When I was in high school and college, I did multiple humanitarian trips around the world doing work that I considered to be the best work someone can do. And I mean, let's be honest, humanitarians are considered some of the best individuals of society because of their giving nature and wanting to go somewhere in the world, help people, relieve a problem, fix an issue successfully, and return back home. But over the last few years, I've realized that the trips that I went on and the things that I did potentially hurt the people and the community that I was trying to help. And this is not an isolated incident. Every day around the world, people embark on humanitarian expeditions to help people in remote locations, but don't realize that they're disabling the people that they're trying to help. With the rising popularity of high school and college humanitarian trips, service expeditions, and church volunteer opportunities, a lot of people aren't talking about the bigger problem that's being created, and I want to change that. Since going on my humanitarian trips, I have learned a lot about how they could potentially be toxic, and I've actually worked as a nonprofit consultant with multiple nonprofits to ensure that their entire system was non-toxic and only helping to empower the people that they were trying to help. As we delve into this issue, my goal is to highlight three different main points. First, what is the problem? Second, who is suffering? And third, what can you do right now with or without money to make a difference? So let me quickly share my story first. The first few years of my high school, I was a pretty terrible person. <laughs> I was extremely selfish, had a lot of internalized anger at the people around me and the world, and I wanted to shut out emotions completely. But one interest that I did have was traveling around the world. But the only way that my parents would let me fund my own travel around the world was if I was to go on a humanitarian trip. And honestly, I didn't care about helping other people. I just wanted to visit another location. So as soon as I got the go from my parents that I could go on a humanitarian expedition, I was like, who cares about helping people? I get to be in a tropical location, relaxing and having fun on a trip. And that's all I cared about. I was able to go on my first international trip to Fiji and Tonga, two island nations in the South Pacific. It was me and other 17 year olds that were given the task of building a home for hurricane survivors that had previously had their home destroyed. And upon returning home from that trip, I was a completely changed person. The difference between the person who left and the person who came back was night and day. And the sole focus of my life after that was making a positive difference in the world and helping people. I went on another humanitarian trip to Africa, did more humanitarian work in the South Pacific, and over my time of going through those experiences, I witnessed a lot of things that didn't seem quite right to me, which contributed to the larger knowledge that I have now about how humanitarian trips are toxic. You may be watching this feeling confused or offended and thinking, Hiram, I went on a humanitarian trip, or I know and supported people who went on humanitarian trips. They are not bad people and what they did was good. What are you talking about? Don't worry, let me explain. So first, what is the problem and who's struggling? First, humanitarian trips promotes a reliance mentality among the people that they're trying to help. When I went on my first humanitarian trip, my mindset going into the country was thinking, I want to help in some way and fix a problem that they can't fix themselves. But upon arriving in the country and starting to build the house, we quickly realized that the local people who lived there had the same, if not better technical skills than we did. They were much more equipped and fit to build a house more than a group of 17 year olds were. And we were actively encouraged to stop and prevent the locals from trying to help in building the house because we were the ones who booked this trip to come to the country and and fix this problem. This was not their responsibility. But the problem that this creates in communities is that it spreads the message to them that they are not able to fix their own problems. It disables them from being able to support themselves. Not only that, it creates self-doubt in locals and can cause some humiliation. Try to empathize and imagine yourself in that scenario. You're in a bad situation and you need support, but you're told that the only way that you can be supported is if an entire group of teenagers from another country thousands of miles away travels all the way there to do that project for you and actively asks you to not participate. Over time and with more and more and more groups coming in, it starts to create this sense of self-doubt and humiliation. People start to think, wow, not only can I not support myself, I need the assistance of people from another country to be able to help me. People will no longer want to utilize the support of their local communities because obviously teenagers from another country need to come all the way here and fix my problems. What is my community gonna be able to do? I'll never forget when I was in Tonga and I became close friends with two kids and I was able to meet their mother and realize that they were in a rather impoverished situation. 
situation. I, wanting to help, collected about half of the clothes that were in my suitcase, put them in a bag because I wanted to donate the clothes to these kids that obviously needed support. I remember that the mother was interacting with some of her female friends. I brought over the bag of clothing and I said to her, here, in case you run out of clothes or aren't able to afford new ones, here's some clothing that you and your kids can use. Ugh, and I will never forget her face. It was pure humiliation in front of her community, in front of her friends that I was telling her, you are not able to support yourself to the point that I have to take my clothes and give them to you because that's what you need. My intent may have been good, but it humiliated her and sent a message to her that, wow, I can't support myself and my own kids. I need the help of this teenager in order to get by. And with all the different humanitarian groups coming in over and over, that message is reinforced over and over and over again until until the communities feel that they have to be completely reliant on these organizations or on these groups in order to have their basic needs met, which disempowers them overall. Number two, it disempowers communities. When we go on a humanitarian trip, we think with the mindset of a community needs help, they don't know how to help themselves or they don't have the materials to do so, and we'll go in and fix it for them. And this oftentimes leads to unsustainable solutions. There's an incredible book that I love called Toxic Charity that really helped open my eyes to the bigger issues at play here. And it talks about how a lot of church groups will go to other countries and dig wells for communities so that they'll have access to clean water. But before the group goes in, they haven't taken the time to really interact, talk, and learn from locals, what the problems that they faced are when it comes to getting access to clean water, the environmental effects on something like a well, problems that they faced in the past, and rather come in with a fix-all solution. If you're going to fix a problem, you need to understand what the problem is. And oftentimes groups will come into other countries with little to no interaction with the locals, so they don't understand the problem best. And in Toxic Charity, he talked about the wells that these churches were building would break within a few months of being built and have wasted all of that effort and money that was used to create it, rather than consulting with the locals to understand what problems they faced in the past and how to get around them. People who aren't part of a community don't best understand understand that community's problems. And when we approach an issue with the we'll fix it mentality, oftentimes we trample over the needed knowledge and support from local community members to find the best and most sustainable solution because we're too focused on getting a quick fix. Not only that, humanitarian trips will oftentimes strip locals of their expertise and financial opportunities. Within every community around the world, you will find people who have specialized experience in building houses, building schools, creating structures, teaching, a lot of the different solutions that humanitarian trips usually aim to solve. When a much better way to support the community would be to pay the local experts to use their expertise to solve that problem and also be financially supporting the local economy to help stimulate it and help it grow. Which leads me to my next point. Three, humanitarian trips are an immature allocation of money. Let's break down the cost. Humanitarian trips per participant usually range from about $4,000 to $7,000. And typically within one group, you'll have anywhere from 15 to 30 participants. That's a range of about $60,000 to $200,000 for a single humanitarian trip. I always just used to justify this as the necessary expense of solving these solutions around the world. That is until I realized the cost of the solutions that the humanitarian trips provide. I have a friend, his name is Kone, and through his nonprofit, he was able to build multiple schools across the Ivory Coast in Africa. For a school that would be able to educate a few hundred students, it cost anywhere from $3,000 to $10,000 in total costs for one school. A lot of projects like building wells, walkways, roads can oftentimes be less than $1,000. And all of that money is going towards local communities, experts, and stimulating the local economy to be able to grow. When you can Consider how much it costs in the local community to build one school versus creating a $200,000 humanitarian trip for people to come in and potentially create the wrong solution for a problem that the community is facing. It shows you how much money is truly being wasted. I mean, if it costs $10,000 to build a school, you're talking about 20 schools that could have been built with the amount of funds raised to send a group of teenagers to another country, which shows that we're not focused on creating a solution to these issues, but rather creating an experience for ourselves, which leads me to my last point. Four, humanitarian trips breed white saviorism. Now, before you get turned off or clicked off, let me explain what this means. Because white saviorism is a very complex and controversial term. Now, honestly, the best definition I've seen of white saviorism so far is actually from Urban Dictionary. White savior refers to Western people going in to quote, fix the problem of struggling nations or people of color without understanding their history, needs, or the region's current state of affairs. A lot of times humanitarian trips can be the epitome of white saviorism, and here's why. Before I went on my first humanitarian trip and I was a little bit of a diva, I thought to myself, wow, I'm gonna be able to go to this country, help save the people, and come back knowing that I did something good. And while this is a bit more of a brazen statement, this is a typical thought process of people who approach humanitarian trips. The 
desire is to go into a country, do something good, and come back knowing that you helped in some major way. Whether that be that you saved the children, you rescued the people from poverty, you're the reason that they're not homeless anymore. And all of this to be done within a one or two week trip. We crave rapid solutions to say that we fixed something, which is where the desire to help turns a little bit more selfish. Because if we were to truly analyze the situation and see what would help the community the most, we would realize that oftentimes humanitarian trips are not the way to go. Because not only are they extremely expensive, not stimulating the local economies, not empowering local experts and workers to resolve their own issues, and creating a cycle of dependence, we would obviously realize that this solution is not best helping the people. But that's the thing, a lot of times humanitarian trips aren't meant to help the people, but more create a positive, uplifting, and self-serving experience for the participants. I can't even tell you the amount of teenagers I've been on trips with where their parents set them on this trip to be able to turn them around, make them do something good for once in their life, and come back a different person. That was the primary goal rather than saying, what is this community struggling with and what is the best solution to their problems? Another thing I've seen firsthand too many times and that honestly enrages me is how white saviorism bleeds into social media. The last few humanitarian trips I was on, participants I was with didn't really cultivate a positive relationship with the locals and more so wanted to take pictures with them to be able to show off what good work they were doing on social media. They wanted to be able to come back with a feel good story and pictures of them saving this country, helping these people, while never actually actually taking the time to get to know locals and understand who they are. Is taking pictures and posting on social media wrong? Absolutely not. I developed so many incredible relationships that I've kept to this day with locals and I've posted pictures of me with people that changed my life, that made me bawl my eyes out when I had to say goodbye to them because of how incredible of people they were. Those people were important to me and I wanted to show how incredible and how much of a positive impact they had had on my life to my friends and family. But the difference comes down to your intent. Were you wanting to take pictures of these people because they were important in your life and you wanted to keep those lifelong friendships and tell others because of how much they changed your life? Or are you documenting this so that you can show others how you thought you changed their life? There's a huge difference and I could go on and on about this, but there's actually an amazing Instagram account called No White Saviors that highlights a lot of the problems with humanitarian porn and the cycle of utilizing others to serve your own benefit. Now saying all of this, you may be pretty discouraged and thinking, wow, everything I thought I knew is wrong. I was wanting to help and I inevitably did nothing good. But I will say, speaking from my personal experience, while I may have not helped the communities that I was trying to help, Help and possibly even hurt them, the difference it made in my life was astronomical. I came back from those trips a completely changed person and it since has helped to make me focus on how I can make a positive difference in the world, how I can help make humanitarian work less toxic, and inevitably led to me working with multiple nonprofit organizations to make sure that their cycles of helping people were not toxic in any way. So knowing all of this, what can you do? First, how can you help with your money? I recommend financially supporting ethical organizations. Organizations that have really taken the time to understand the communities that they're trying to help and work with them to create solutions of empowerment that help them create their own solutions. Kiva.org is one of my favorite organizations because it operates on a microloan system that allows you to financially support projects around the world that inevitably empower people. I'll put more information in the description box below. But overall, focus on organizations that are focused more on empowering the people rather than helping the people. It's the difference of give a man a fish versus teach a man a fish. Helping is a one-time solution while empowering is giving them the tools to fix their own problems. If you do want to go on a humanitarian trip, I recommend being very picky and critical about how the humanitarian trips operate. One I like is me to we because they actually work alongside locals to fix the issues rather than coming in and doing it for the locals. They're also very in touch with the needs of the community and have a system entirely based on empowerment rather than helping. Also, rather than going on a trip where you build a house or you build a school, find trips that need a specific area of expertise that you can provide. If you're a doctor, go on a medical trip where they need your expertise. If you know languages that are spoken in the country and there's a need for English teachers, provide that expertise. If nothing else, come into the country equipped with something that they're not able to get in their local community and help them build themselves up. Two, what can I do with my time? You may not have the money to donate or to afford a trip. What can you do? Well, first, one thing that I did, you can start working with and become a volunteer for nonprofit organizations that are already in place in those communities and understand the problems best. One way I did this was with an organization that 
that I worked for in a country called Vanuatu. Vanuatu had a desperate need for English teachers and I was able to organize and manage a trip of English teachers to the country and oversee their work to make sure everything was taken care of. I was able to have a humanitarian trip while also recognizing my limitations and ways that I would be able to empower rather than disable the community. Find an ethical organization that you really love and figure out ways that you can volunteer for them, whether it be locally or if you want to travel abroad. They're gonna know what the community needs most. And then last of all, what can you do right now to make a difference? When it comes to an issue like this, the most important thing is changing your mindset. Critically think about humanitarian work and nonprofit organizations. Who are the founders? Who are they working with? Are they working with local representatives from the community? How are they empowering rather than helping the communities? What is their exit strategy for when the problems are resolved? What percentage of the donations actually go to the communities themselves? Start being very perceptive and critical about how you view nonprofit organizations and humanitarian trips so that you're able to find which institutions are best and be able to share that with others. And then lastly, and this is my favorite way, use gifting opportunities as a way to support these organizations. I love giving micro loan gifts as birthday gifts or Christmas gifts to the people I love because there's really no better gift than being able to say, hey, instead of buying you a physical item, I financially supported this group of women in this country. And with those funds that they'll pay back, they'll be able to create their own business that sustains them and their families for the long run. Like that's one of the coolest gifts that you can give or the organization Meet We also has physical products like jewelry, books, coffee, all of which are made in local communities empowering the people while also giving you a physical item. You may not have money right now to donate, but come Christmas time or birthdays, it's a great way to do both. Overall, I want to say I am so grateful for the experiences that I had with humanitarian trips. Not only did it completely change the person I am into being more thoughtful, more globally aware, and wanting to really make a difference in the world, I've also learned what not to do and how I can help change the system so that humanitarian trips are more ethical and non-toxic. And you can be a part of that too by sharing this information or sharing this video to people you know in your life or anyone who is considering going on a humanitarian trip or wanting to donate to an organization. That is a great way of starting because with knowledge comes power and with power comes the ability to completely change the industry into a force for good. Thank you to all of the information and sources that helped me create this video. They are all listed in the description box below, but I want to hear your guys' thoughts. Have you gone on a humanitarian trip? Have you recognized these cycles? Do you agree with my sentiments or is there a way that you believe the system could be better? I want to hear your respectful opinion below. And as a final note to anyone who has been on a humanitarian trip or expedition, this is not me personally attacking you or saying that you are a bad person because of the trip that you went on. With any mistake, it's important to recognize how you were wrong so that you can improve in the future. And I hope that this video can for some be a wake up call to realize how they can make better decisions in the future. Be sure to subscribe to Selfless to learn more about social issues around the world and how you can make a positive difference right now. And thank you all for watching. Bye.